Extremely important video today. This is going to be on the topic of booleans with curved surfaces. A lot of people use booleans on curved surfaces. They get tons of issues, shading issues, artifact issues, and it's just a mess. It's very easy to use booleans on curved surfaces contrary to popular belief. You just have to approach it properly. Now before we get started, if you want to learn a bit more about hard surface modeling and grab some of our free stuff, head over to blenderbros.com slash free dash guides. We have a free course over there for you to pick up, a free ebook, and if you want to learn a bit more of the strategies we use in hard surface modeling, we also have our nine secrets blender training, all of those for free on our website. So before we can even discuss booleans on curved surfaces, you need to understand resolution. Resolution is very important when we talk about these. It's not so simple. It's not so black and white. So if I have a cylinder here, and let's say, let's actually use a new cylinder. It's going to be a better example. Let's say this cylinder has 16 vertices. It's kind of blocky. And this will be a fantastic example. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to just duplicate this guy rotate it 90 degrees, maybe scale this up, and then just run a cut through it. So a few different things to mention here um, before we actually continue on. The first thing we need to do is shade it auto smooth. And this is going to give us the nice shading we want. And this is where you can really begin to see the shading issues, not to mention if you add a bevel, you know, they'll get a little bit worse as well. So you can kind of see how bad this looks. Not only do we have this faceting here, we also have some pretty bad shading issues around here. Now, what if this hole was higher resolution? What if instead of using this cylinder with 16 segments, what if I used a cylinder with say 64 segments? We're gonna go ahead, shade that auto smooth, and scale this down, run the cut, and also shade this one auto smooth. You're gonna see it's pretty similar issue, but the artifacts are actually a lot more obvious in this particular example. So if we go into wireframe, you can kind of see we have a much higher resolution in here and a much lower one on the outside. So how exactly do we kind of figure out, you know, how do we add these holes in and at what resolution? The first thing you need to understand about shading issues on curved surfaces is they're nothing more than bent topology. The reason we don't have any shading issues without the boolean is because we have nice, even, consistent faces all the way around. Now the moment we run a boolean, what this does is it creates n-gons, and it's not the n-gon that's the issue. We have a big n-gon up here, and we have no shading problems. The issue is that this n-gon is bent, and what I mean by that is if I had an n-gon, maybe I'll, um, I don't know, subdivide this and then just dissolve these out and maybe have this end gone out here, right? The issue is not the end gone itself, it's the fact that the end gone is bent, which causes those issues. And that is precisely what this Boolean is doing here. It's creating these end gones and also making them bent, which is why we have those shading errors. You can see if I retopologize this, we wouldn't actually have those issues at all. I'll just do a quick retopology with a quad remesher. You're gonna see we don't have those issues anymore because we retopologized it into quads, a little bit of facet in there, so maybe I should have done, you know, 100% um, on the adaptive size, but you kind of get the idea, there you go. Now, I wouldn't suggest doing retopology unless you need it for your particular pipeline, and most, you know, examples with hard surface modeling, you're going for renders or game assets or just cool models, and in those cases, you don't need to retopologize, you're wasting your time, and I say this over and over and over, the quads do not matter unless you need it for your particular pipeline, and in many cases, people don't. So the goal here is to minimize the shading issues, and the way we minimize the shading issues is via higher resolution. You want to have higher resolution geometry, and I'll show you why. Notice right now, we have a pretty large n-gon right here, and since we have a large n-gon that is bent, what it's doing is it's kind of you know, projecting that shading all the way through the length of that n-gon. Now, if this thing was significantly higher resolution, the shading issues would be smaller and smaller and smaller, and I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm again, I'm just gonna use that 16 segment example, but this time what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add in a few loop cuts in here just to make it a little bit more dense, and then we'll add in the other cylinder 
with a higher resolution just for good measure. And let's see what happens on this example. We're gonna scale this through. And again, we're gonna shade this one auto smooth. And you can see the shading issues are already a lot better because now we've kind of mitigated those problems and kind of isolated them to this more localized area. See what I did there? Now again, the base cylinder here was still 16 segments, so what will happen if I use a much higher resolution cylinder to begin with? Let's say 64. So what I'm gonna do here is use a 64 segment cylinder. I'm going to add in quite a few segments here as well. So we basically, right up front, have a higher resolution cylinder to work with. And then if I cut my hole in here, let's see exactly what happens. Okay, I'm gonna go in, we're gonna cut that, I'm gonna shade this auto smooth, and now you can barely see any issues at all. If you really zoom in, you might be able to see a few problems here and there. Perhaps if you use a matte cap with a more reflective surface, you might be able to see those a bit better but look at how much more isolated the problems are. The reason that happened is because we have a much higher resolution cylinder. So instead of having a big end gone up here that's bent, we're isolating them. We're kind of making them a lot smaller. So it's only affecting these areas here. And this is the key to using Booleans on curved surfaces. I'm not worried about the topology in most cases. I'm worried about how it actually looks. So if I can avoid this, I'm just gonna make the resolution higher and get on with my life. That's uh, kind of my philosophy there. Now, what I also wanna show you is that if we look in the inside, notice how we also have these nasty shading errors on the inside. And that's because we have these really long stretched end gons all the way across. They look like quads, but in fact, they're actually end gons, right? So what we need to do is we need to have a higher resolution on the inside as well. So I would recommend doing that before you apply your Boolean. So if I undo that, before you apply your Boolean, I would take it and then just make that higher resolution on the inside as well. You can just kind of eyeball it and um, just uh, shade auto smooth. And also I would recommend shading auto smooth the actual cutter or what you can do is you can just apply the Boolean and then shade auto smooth the mesh again. Now you're gonna see we don't have any shading issues on the inside there. And the reason this looks so clean is because of the overall resolution of this object here. Now, what a lot of people like to do at this point is they like to add in bevels and there's nothing wrong with that. However, in a situation like this where we have such high resolution, there's a pretty good chance that right when we add in that bevel, it's gonna start overlapping with some of that geometry. Notice like right here, for example, it starts overlapping almost immediately. So you can either waste your time sliding all of these out of the way, which I wouldn't recommend, or you can do one of two things. You can either use an offset cut, or you can use a bevel shader, which is a rendering trick. I'll show you the uh, bevel shader first. Now this isn't gonna work in solid view or look dev, it has to be in cycles. So you would essentially go into cycles, and let me load in a new HDRI, and there we go. And then you can just add in a simple material like that. And then we just have to go into the shader editor and simply add in a bevel shader, shift A, input bevel, connect that up here and just make it a little bit smaller, maybe 0 0.02. So it's basically a fake shadow that makes it look like there's a bevel. So you're not gonna have those artifact issues. So there's the before and there's the after. This is probably the most easy solution because you don't have to deal with those artifacts. Now. If you did want to have this in solid view or have like a physical bevel, this is where the offset cut feature will come in handy. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use Mesh Machine. It is a paid tool, but it's well worth it. And what we're going to do is we're going to alt, uh, alt click on one edge and then alt click it again, or rather select one edge, alt click it again. And what we need to do is give this area some buffer. So we're going to press the Y key, use the offset cut feature. You can change the size and just give yourself enough room to actually add in that bevel. So now we kind of have a nice buffer there for the bevel and we don't have to deal with any sort of bevel shader. Now you're gonna see the shading issues do come out a bit more, so keep that in mind. You could also make the resolution higher uh, if you wanted to to avoid those, but that's the other solution there. And for just a basic concept piece or something like that, 
um, you're not going to really see those issues, especially if you were to add in a texture, for example. So let's say I, you know, used Material Works here, our new add-on, and I use like a, I don't know, a camo or something. Just like that, you're going to see it kind of masks the shading issues in the first place. You really can't see them anymore once you add in some sort of texture. So again, that's why I don't stress too much over the the actual sh uh, shading issues or the topology rather. I just want to get it so I can't really see them. So that is really all you need to know about using booleans on curved surfaces. Increase the resolution, isolate the shading, use a texture if you're doing a cool render to mask the shading even more, or if you're you know really crazy, you could retopologize the whole thing. Why waste your time though if you don't need to? So it's a very simple solution. A lot of people stress about it when it's not a big deal. Remember, higher resolution, isolate the shading. Those are the only things you need to do. So I hope this video helped and hopefully next time you do this, it'll be a lot more straightforward and you won't have to stress so much about the shading issues. So thanks for watching. Again, head over to blenderbros.com slash free dash guides. Pick up some of our resources over there. We have some free courses and things for you to uh, watch and learn from. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.